Hey everybody, welcome back to Dad Does Videos. Today we are going to show you how to replace these old white wood spindles with new wrought iron spindles. And as you can see, this is the bottom of my steps, we have quite a few of them. So this is gonna be a long project, but I'm gonna do one section at a time and show you how to uh, do all of them. We're gonna start with these right here. And the, the thing that I like to do first, just because you're gonna to need to know where the bottoms of these were after you took them off, just take a pencil and just go around the base of each one, tight to the base. Uh, so that way, after you get these out, you will have a mark around there to let you know where these were positioned. So we're gonna do that first. Okay, so after, you have traced around the base of your spindles. And it doesn't matter, right? If you are going to paint this, we'll just paint right over those marks. If you're not gonna paint it, it's not a big deal because you could just kind of erase it away. But the next step is to break out the reciprocating saw and you're gonna use these to cut your wood balusters. So just pick one to start with, right? And fire away. Once you've got this cut in half, as you can see here, uh, the tipic, it's easy to just kind of twist these out. You might need to use a little force behind them, but that's typically the way they come out. You can see doing that. And it depends how they're, they're screwed in or nailed in. So just keep working these out the best that you can. Again, depending upon how they're, they're nailed in or screwed in, you might have different ways to deal with it. These top ones are nailed in. The bottom one I'll show you in a second is nailed and screwed. So it gives you a better shot at that. So here's what the bottoms of mine look like. And if it's kind of hard to tell, but these are two nails right here. And this is the bottom of a screw. So what we're gonna have to eventually do, so these, this whole thing was assembled, kind of prefabricated and then put in, um, which means these balusters were screwed and nailed in from the bottom. So we're gonna have to take this whole riser off to get all these nails and screws out from the bottom, which is really kind of a pain. Uh, a lot of them, you don't have to do this when you're replacing these and putting in the wrought iron balusters, but we're going to have to do that. So you'll see shortly, we're gonna have to take these off. There are screws under here. Um, we are, I'm gonna try it next, but as you can see on the top here, these are nails coming down as well. Okay, as you can see here, I have all the spindles of the balusters down on this section of the staircase. And as I talked about before, you can see pretty clearly now these screws coming up from the bottom. It just depends, and there's a cat kind of that got in my way. Um, some of them are more pronounced than others, but what we have to do to remedy that situation is take this, take this off. Um, and what we want to do is start down here with this post and actually probably this, this railing first, because what we have to do is, is take this off because we'll need to, to get this riser out from basically underneath this. So this needs to come down and this banister needs to come down. And if you can see here, underneath these little plugs there, are just, let's see if I can get it, but these just hide the screws. So there's probably a little caulk behind here, some glue, uh, but inside here, you'll have to trust me, there is a screw. So we'll have to unscrew this and then as you can see, 
there's another one right there and we'll unscrew that and that means this will come off. Okay, so here's our handrail on the floor now, all off in one piece. As you can see here, I still have some work to do and we'll get into this a little bit later, but you could still see the, the nail slash staple sticking out of the bottom here. Um, you could also see uh, some holes uh, and that's not the only one that um, showcase where the nails used to be as I was taking the spindles out those just ripped a little bit and this is really this really isn't a big deal we'll just get some some wood filler and patch this up and sand it and if you're doing something like me I guess it's not a big deal because I'm just going to paint this black um, so we're just going to sand it or put the, the wood filler in sand it and then paint over top of it so it's 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 uh, I'm not concerned about it next step is to get this post off and just like, as you can see, here's my, my screw still in there to get that out. But just like the other ones, um, you just have to remove these covers, these four, and remove the screw from the inside and that'll come right off. Okay, as you can see, no more post. We have that on the floor now as well. As you can see, this is why I wanted to take that off because we wouldn't be able to get this part off without the post was covering this section of it, so that's why it needed to come off first. So now we'll we'll uh, remove these covers and get the screws out of there and take this piece off. Okay, so I've got all the screws out of our holes all the way up and down. Um, one thing I did not mention, so before you're able to just lift this up, there should be a bead of caulk all the way around this even if you can't see it it's tough to see mine because i've got white paint but let me assure you that up here and going all the way around where the wood meets the paint there is a bead of caulk so what i'm going to do is get my trusty um knife out my box cutter knife and just go and just score it all the way around on both sides uh, just to release that um, that connection from the caulk to the wood and it's up here and then down the other side as well. As you can see here, it's starting after I did that and I kind of, if, if it's still a little stuck just because it sat there for years, just give it a couple bumps and you'll start to see it start to pop up. So I'm just going to take this all the way around as you can see. And let's see, it's starting to come up. I just need to use a little bit more leverage. So I guess if you ever wanted to see the inside of your railings, this is what they look like once you have that piece off. And then just to give you kind of an idea of what we're looking at from the flip side of these, if you'll remember, and this is the bottom of the riser we just took off, you can see these screws right here and right here. Those are these. Right? So this is why it makes it so much easier, even though it's a little extra time intensive to, um, to take this off, but it's so much easier just to unscrew these from the bottom. Okay, so what we're doing right now is in the midst of taking out these staples from underneath the railing, you can see them. There are a couple right here and a few more, and I've already taken some off. The other parts. Now this is kind of a challenge because again, since this whole thing was put together as one unit, taking this apart and removing some of these kind of staples, so to speak, is really tough because I've used needle nose pliers, I've tried the back of a, a hammer, I've tried all kinds of different things to get these things out. None is really easy. The best thing that I've come up with so far is to use a drill bit and then basically drill in between the two pieces of the staple that are out so that it basically loosens the connector in between these two pieces that are out and then you can just use needle nose pliers or something similar to just pull those out. So what I'm using right here you can see is a 5 30 seconds drill bit and what I do is just drill right in there to loosen this up and then pull those out with my needle nose pliers. So if you need to, then spread these 
these prongs out a bit to enable your drill bit to get in there. And you might need to do this a few times because that's not wiggly enough yet. Um, to really get in there. And this isn't gonna matter. You're probably thinking, well, why are you drilling holes in the underside of the railing? And it's not gonna really matter because we're just gonna fill these in with um, the plastic wood, the wood filler. So once we, we fill that in, let it dry, sand it and paint it, you're never, gonna, you're never gonna see it. Plus it's on the underside. So even if there are any imperfections, it's not gonna matter. So this is what you kind of have to do. You can see. And there we go, we get them out. It's kind of laborious. Okay, so once you get all those staples out, uh, what I like to do next is just make a, a smooth surface on top. You're going to have um, some some pieces of w the wood kind of sticking out where you, you got the, uh, the staples out. And I like to just go over these with a putty knife just to kind of get them down to the surface and make sure there isn't anything big sticking out. You could use sandpaper too, but I, like, I prefer this at first. Um, you might want to use some sandpaper if you have any other rough surfaces, but... I like to do this just because next we're going to fill these these holes with uh, with the wood, and you could do the same with this piece as well. Okay, so the next part of this, we are simply going to fill the holes. I've mentioned this a little bit before on the underside of your railing with plastic wood, just wood filler. Um, you could just buy this at Home Depot or Lowe's. And you could get different um, colors that match certain types of wood, but we don't, I don't at least really care because I'm just going to paint this anyway. So you just get a, um, a putty knife uh, and just scoop a little on. You can see it's pretty, pretty bendy. Um, and just fill the holes just, just like this. And I probably put a little bit too much on. So just... I pop those in there and all you're trying to do is just fill it. It doesn't have to be perfect because remember, at least for me, what I'm going to do is sand these down after they dry and um, we're going to paint them black anyway. So I'm just going to fill all of these in right now with this putty. I'm going to do this on the underside of my railing and if you'll recall my riser too. So I'm going to fill all those holes. Don't, don't, don't fill the holes that your screws will go into like that and that and all the way down, but the part where your uh, balusters were in, I'm going to fill all those in. So this is also a great time if you haven't already to cut away the old caulk that is on your steps going up and down. So for instance, if you have something like I do, there's usually going to be a bead of caulk that was between your riser going up and the actual uh, wood from the steps. So I just kind of hacked away at it and I used just a, a little blade um, to go all the way down and get rid of some of that caulk that was uh, along the side. And what I would do is so just grab something like this and just kind of go, you can see there's a little bit left here. I can kind of get away at because while I'm going to paint my handrail and risers and everything else black, I'm going to just repaint all of this white. So I felt like it was a good time for me to cut away at that, that old caulk after um, I get everything set to go back on. And while you're getting the caulk out going up your stairs, it's also a good time to get the caulk. As you can see here by my pinky finger, we've got a nice white strip going all the way. I'm going to get my blade out and remove that as much as I can as well, because we're going to put a new, a new strip of caulk down after we um, get this back on. All right, and once you get that old caulk off everything, you are ready to put everything back on. Hopefully you saved 
all the different pieces and parts, whether that's the screws or the covers in a plastic bag or something like that. So you can just reuse them and, um, and put them back in. So what I like to do first is put the post back on. Um, you'll obviously need this to put this railing back on, but I also find it helpful to put the post on because then you can slide this piece in and it stops where the post is. So it, um, it helps you just kind of hold that in place where you, while you screw everything back in. So if you're paying attention, you can see that I actually taped along my steps here uh, because what I want to do after I put the, the new bead of caulk all around the different areas, I knew that I was going to, to paint the, uh, the walls white right here. And as you can see, all the way up the steps, I've got it and I have to do a little bit of uh, more work right there. But uh, I figured since I'm doing this part right here, I might as well make everything look nice and fresh. So I like to use this caulk. Um, it's an acrylic latex and it has silicone in it. It's paintable. You typically want to use a latex when you are working with um, situations like this where we are uh, filling holes between wood, uh, those kinds of things, situations where you might want to paint over it. It has the silicone in it, which I like because it makes it a little bit flexible. It doesn't crack over time. So this is the one that we're going to use in your situation. I don't know what your specifics are. It could be a little bit different. I also like this because it dries really fast. If you're in a situation where you need to, to paint pretty quickly, look, paint in 20 minutes now, if that's actually the case, I'm not so sure about that, but uh, it's certainly a, a fast dryer. Couple quick words about getting your caulk ready to use and your caulk gun. So you're gonna wanna chop the, the top off a little bit as you can see here. And the best way to do that, just take a look at your caulk gun if you haven't used one before. That's what this hole is for. Just put your the tip in there and squeeze away. You have to, to twist a little bit, but eventually you'll notice the, uh, the top of your tube will come off. And then this piece of metal that is typically on every every caulk gun right here. It's not just for show. That is so that you can then puncture the seal in here. So you just simply press straight down in here and it opens the, uh, the seal. So then you can see I've got some caulk on it already so that it allows the caulk to, to start to come out. So didn't know if you, uh, had any experience with this, but thought I'd share. Okay, so we've got our gun loaded. We're gonna get busy. Now the caulk never goes on smoothly, I feel like. Um, so what I like to do after I get a bead going is to, oops, and case in point, is to smooth it out with um, some water and I put a little dish soap in it that tends to decrease the odds that the uh, the caulk will, will stick to my hands. And I think we've all been there, right? When you're dealing with caulk, oftentimes it's a, uh, it gets all over you. So I like to try to avoid that as much as possible. So just make a bead down your entire length here. And don't worry, as long as you're covering the, uh, the spot between the two places where whatever other surface it is join, you're in good shape because we'll smooth it out here in a bit. Now, like I mentioned, especially since this is fast drying, what I typically like to do is get a little mixture of water in a little dish soup, just a squirt, and then dip my hands in it. It decreases the chance that the, uh, the caulk sticks to me, although I'm sure it will happen. And then just run my finger along the best I can uh, to make this at least appear like somewhat of a decent job. And eventually you're gonna wanna wipe your finger off because there gets to be a little bit too much caulk going, as you can see, and then it starts to, to get all over the place. And sometimes I like to go back over the places that
popped already just to uh to smooth things out without it looking awful. I feel like there's definitely a skill here <laughs> with putting caulk on that I have yet to master. It is uh certainly a challenge for those of us who don't do it every day. All right, so here we are with our finished caulk lines. All the way down, looks like we're in pretty good shape. And then on the other side, as you can see, all the way down. Now, if you're in a position like me, um, don't feel like you need to be perfect. Now, you don't want any big bumps or stop and goes in your caulk where it, you can tell like your finger stopped and, and then you went forward or any anything like that because you're just gonna paint over some of that stuff anyway with whether it's the, the white on the side here or the black that we're gonna use on top. So one way or another, uh, it's not a big deal. Okay, so here is a look at the, uh, the finished product, so to speak, when you paint and remove the painter's tape. So like I mentioned, I went all the way up the steps with my paint just because I figured, well, if I'm, if I'm doing it, I might as well do it right. Uh, and you can see how, how nice and clean and bright it looks. Uh, we went right over the caulk right there, and that looks really nice. Now, of course, I'm going to be painting uh, all these different parts and pieces of the steps, whether it's the railing or the post down here or the uh, the riser itself, there's gonna be black. Uh, so I wasn't perfect with my white just because I knew these, the black was gonna be painted over top of it. Next step, what we want to do is sand down our wood fillers uh, all over the place. So whether it's on the riser or remember underneath, right, on the railing, uh, we're gonna do that. So what I'm going to do is use this product. I like the hand sponges. They're a little bit more costly than just buying sandpaper, but they're easier on your hand. Um, and this is a, uh, a 220 extra fine. So I'm just gonna go over all these places because you can see when you're close to it. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get you a great look, but um, if I rub my hands over top, or maybe you can, you can look a little bit but you can see some bumps in there. We just want to make sure that everything's smooth and nice uh, before we start putting in our spindles and we start painting and doing everything else like that. Okay, so we are ready to move on to the next step. We have sanded, everything's nice and smooth. Right here, as you can see in the background, I took the opportunity to take down the spindles throughout most of my staircase put in the wood filler, get everything ready to go so I could be a little bit more efficient with this process. The way that I'm going to move on to the next step and what I'm going to use to start to build the base of the spindles is this product. This is the Zip Clip by the Carolina Stair Company. I will put the link in the description, but what I like about this, it lets you put the base of the spindles in and the top of the spindles in without drilling big holes in your handrail or your riser. So it's a little bit more convenient. These cost, I think like six bucks each. So it adds a little bit more to the cost, but as you'll see, it makes the process of putting your spindles in so, so much easier. Let's take a look. Okay, so if you're following along with me and installing the zip clip system, we are just putting down the base of the spindle holders right now. So what you'll want to do if you have your pack like I do, you just want to get one of these out. One of them will form the bottom base and one of them will be the top. And the top we'll do later after we paint, the bottom we'll do now. So go ahead and pick which one you want and get it out. Okay, so you've got your base out and you wanna line it up like this. And remember, when we were taking our spindles down, what we did was we um, used a pencil to draw along the base of the spindle. So that's where this comes back into play. You're gonna to wanna to get your base from your zip clip and just put it right in the middle of your outline. One other thing here that I want to point out, when you install these, 
This should be set up like this instead of flipped over like that. So make sure the base clip is set up like that. And what you can want to do is just line it up perfectly within your traced shape, which is probably going to be a rectangle, or if you are on a flat surface, probably a square. Make sure it's set up and then use the screws that came with the system and drill your screws into the holes provided. Okay, once you've drilled in those screws, that's what it should look like. We are going to, you'll notice this, this piece on the end here, this is going to be used later on. Once we get the spindle in this holder, we'll lock it in with this piece. But we'll tackle that later. And the, one of the reasons that we want to put these on first, at least in my situation, because as I've mentioned a few times, we're gonna paint this black we didn't want to paint it first because then we would cover up our pencil lines and wouldn't know exactly where to put our, our bases for these, um, for the rip, the zip clips. And I didn't want to risk painting first and then installing these and then chipping the paint or anything like that. So that's why we're doing it in this order. Okay, so as you can see here, we've got the bases of all of our clips in right now. And as you can see, even on the, the other side, we've got them going all the way up. You can see my painter's tape is ready to go to. I taped off all the areas where I'm going to paint the uh, staircase black. What I'm going to do next though, before I get into that is put these uh, screw covers back on. So if you'll recall, to get to those screws, we had to remove these little screw covers uh, that are pretty much within every staircase. So what I'm gonna do is just put a little Gorilla Glue, just a tiny speck on the, uh, the bottom of these right here, and then just push them, push them in. I can't stand these when they pop out. I feel like everybody's just are popping out all the time. And some people put them in with like kind of caulk and I've never understood that. So I'm just gonna put a little speck of, of Gorilla Glue in there and glue that on and then we'll get started painting. Okay, as you can see here, we are about ready to roll to paint. We've got everything taped off all over the place on our railings and risers. So what I'm gonna do next, just to make sure I've got all the dust off is get a tack cloth and just wipe everything down to make sure there is nothing that is going to impede our paint. All right, so after our tack cloth picked up all the dust and dirt on our painting surfaces, we're ready to roll. We're going to use this new two inch angle brush here to apply this general finishes black milk paint. I'm using milk paint because you do not have to sand before you use that. We'll probably put on three coats. You're supposed to sand in between each coat. So we'll get the first coat on, see what it looks like, and uh, go from there. Okay, so we have our first coat of our black milk paint down on the steps here. And as you can see, this is going to take a couple coats here. You could obviously see the wood through the the black paint, but we knew that was, was going to happen, but it looks nice. So the next step here, we're just following the directions on the can of paint is to sand with a 320 to 420 grit sponge. So that's what we have here. And we're just going to lightly go over all the parts that we painted. And yeah, it's kind of a pain, but the nice thing is it will ensure a, uh, a smooth finish at the end. Okay, so we just sanded down all the pieces and parts that are black. And as you can see here, it's probably a pretty good shot right here. Um, you can see some of the, the scraping going on and these are uh, a little bit more 
uh, gray rather than, than black now. So the next step after this is to get another tack cloth that you hopefully used earlier to make sure there's no dust or anything on the areas that you painted. We're gonna uh, use a new one just because there's nothing on it and then go over all the parts that we dusted to make sure we catch all that stuff before we start painting again. So we are finished with our second coat of black paint and this is starting to look really, really nice. We are going to sand this once more and then do one more coat of black paint. As you can see here, let me try to get a, a shot. There's still some spots, this is pretty good, where you can see the, uh, the wood through the black paint. So I'm hoping one more coat will do it. Okay, so we just finished our third coat and everything is looking pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and start with our top coat. Here's what I'm going to be using for our top coat. As you can see, it's another General Finishes product. It's a high performance satin. We're probably gonna do three coats. We'll see what it looks like after two, but I uh, feel more confident in going with three. As you can see here, I have my different foam brushes that I'm going to use for these depending upon the width of um, where I am in uh, finishing, you know, these these pieces right here, or the railings or the posts. You know, the the wider the area, the wider brush I'll go with. And for you know some of the the trickier spots, say for instance, some of these grooves in the posts, I'll probably use this um, smaller brush. So let's get uh, one coat down. We'll see what it looks like and go from there. Okay, so when you're putting your top coat on, you want to put it on pretty thick. And the key here is to put it on in long strokes. And I'm just getting some of this the top coat on right now, and then I'm going to kind of brush it out, so to speak. But don't go skimpy on the top coat. If you read the directions, they tell you to apply pretty liberally and go with the long, long strokes because you don't want to see in your top coat, any of the brush marks or lap marks. So go all the way down, and again, all the way down. And you'll see I'm continuing to apply and putting lots on here. And I know I'm going back and forth and doing some, some quick strokes, but as you'll see, once I get that on, I start all over again and go all the way down. So it's a nice, clean, flow and you just do that the whole way and for trickier spots like the top of this post I use just the one inch brush here and do the best I can to get the the top coat all over it again I'm doing some some shorter strokes at first but uh, later on as you can see right now I'm trying to do that best I can to kind of Make some bigger, broader strokes all the way around so that we hardly leave any evidence of any brush marks or lap marks or anything like that. I use that same brush to get underneath the post right here, or at least the, the top of the post. And then what I like to do is use my smaller foam brush, the half inch one, to get into some of the grooves as you can see right here. It's a perfect size, at least in my situation right here, to get into some of these tighter spaces that have a little bit more detail to them. You can see right under this post, again, using that same concept of the bigger strokes all the way around. And then some of the lip right here. Just apply it and then again, kind of brush everything out when you're finishing that, that part of the post. And 
And again, don't go light on your, your top coat. Since this is just the first application of this, even if we do see some, some lapping or anything like that, we can go back when we sand the top coat and try to get some of that out. But again, as you can see here, trying to use longer strokes where I'm not stopping all the way around to remove the chances of that happening. Okay, so I'm about two thirds of the way through applying the second layer of the top coat and I thought I'd take a minute to show you exactly what I'm doing. I've got my 320 grit sanding sponge here and I'm simply just going over the uh, first layer of the top coat with this. Lightly, just scratching it up a little bit um, just per the directions on the, the, the top coat can. Uh, as you can see here, I'm just taking it and running it right over the first top coat. We'll do the same thing throughout the whole piece. And this is a good way to ensure your next layer of top coat is adhering correctly and it's helpful because it gets out some of the um, maybe imperfections in your, your first layer of the top coat. Maybe you dribbled a little bit extra on one part. Uh, maybe you could see an area where you um, didn't clean up a lap mark or something like that. So going over it with this sanding block really helps clean up those types of things. And just like before, we grab our tack cloth again and go over all the areas that we sanded to make sure we clean up all the dust and grit from that process to make sure when we have our top coat going down, it goes down nice, it goes down smoothly, and you don't get any of that grit stuck in there. So after you do some of that sanding and getting some of that grit off with the tack cloth, you're gonna notice the scratches that you caused from the sanding, but don't worry about it. So you can see this right here. You can see some of the scratches right here. This is all normal and is what's supposed to happen. So I just wanted to show this to you so that you can not freak out about it if you were thinking of doing that. And we're gonna show you what this looks like after we have that next layer of top coat on so you can see it's not a big deal. I think the first time you do this, it's a little frightening when you're like, oh my gosh, I scratched this whole thing up. I hope I didn't ruin what I'm doing. But that's exactly what's supposed to happen. Okay, and as you can see here, after we applied that second top coat where these scratches were before, they are no longer there. You have a few views of this, just so you can check it out and along the side here. So don't worry about scratching up your, your layers of top coat. Uh, that is certainly the process, as you can see here. Once you put that second layer on, or depending upon what coat you're on, those go away. Okay, so we are going to be moving on to our third top coat. As you can see here, we are finished with our second one. Things are really starting to look really nice and really shiny. So if that is your intent, then keep following. So we're going to um, move forward and sand down all of the railings, risers, posts, once more and put our third layer and final layer of top coat on and we will uh, then show you what that looks like and it'll be nice to get this green painter's tape out of the way too. Okay, so we put on the last coat of top coat and we are good to go here. You can see here that also took off the green painter's tape so you could have a better idea of what this actually looks like when it's all finished. So. I'm really happy with how this turned out so far. It looks really, really nice, and I hope it will look even better once we get our wrought iron spindles going in. Okay, so to proceed with this part, and it looks like we have a special guest here who may or may not stick around, you're gonna need the, the top of your zip clip system. Remember, that's, that's the other side. It's the same thing that we drilled into um, the angle part going up the steps, but it's the other side and we are going to put it up against our railing just like that. So it's the opposite 
of how we drilled it in. When it's on the, the bottom, you put it in, I can show you, just like that, and you drill it in. And if you forget how to do that, just go back in the video. But when um, we're putting it in on, on top, going up into the railing, you just flip it around. So what I'm going to do is eventually put this on, but I'm also going to get the tops and bottoms of my, uh, my spindles, so the covers, so to speak, for these. So first one goes in here, and I'm just gonna put that in and make sure it goes right into the zip clip that we have already installed. Put that in like that. And then, if I can find it, I'm going to put the other one on. Just like that. And of course, this is already assuming that you've measured, cut your spindle. Um, a lot of people like to use a, a chop saw for that. I don't do this type of work all the time. I just use the hacksaw. Um, it's a little bit easier for me to control the cut, and um, I don't I don't have a chop saw. So then we get the top of our zip clip system, like I showed you before, and set that up like so. And when you're underneath here, you're just gonna wanna um, put it in the middle, uh, this top part in the middle of your railing. So when you screw this in, and there are two screw holes here, we're gonna use those two of the black screws that came with the system, and we're just gonna install the, uh, the top of this zip clip system in those top two screws that you can see right there. But another thing that you might like here is to get a level with the magnets on it. Uh, that way you can just attach it to your spindles and make sure it's level while you're doing the work. I like to do it like that, just to make sure what I'm doing stays level the whole time. So what we're gonna do is get our one of our screws, put it on the end of our drill and simply drill it into one of these holes. And I like to leave a little wiggle room. I don't go all the way in at first because there might be times you might need to adjust the top of the clip. Maybe it started to go in a little crooked or something like that. So then I'll get my other one and go around to the other side and hopefully not get in your way. And do the other screw right here. Let's see if I can. There we go. And then we just like to tighten these up. So don't overdo it, but you know, make sure you make them nice and tight. What you want to do next is get your uh, three millimeter Allen wrench and tighten the zip clip that you put on top. So let me give you a, a closer view of what that looks like. So as you can see right in here, when you tighten this part up, you'll get less wiggle. You can see it wiggles a little bit. So you'll tighten it up, it won't wiggle at all anymore. That's purposely designed like that so that you can play with this before you make a final determination on how you want this, uh, the, the orientation to be um, before you tighten it. So I've got my, my Allen wrench, and again, I'm checking my level. Everything looks good down here, if you can see that. And then I'm just simply putting in my Allen wrench and tightening. and there's no more wiggle here at all. So at that point, I just take my level off. We are going to move the top of our spindle, or the, the cover, all the way up. And there are Allen wrench screws on each side of these. So there's one right here, and there's one right here. What you'll need is a three millimeter Allen wrench, and 
by the way, if I haven't said it already, it makes sense to go get yourself an Allen wrench set. They cost $15, $16, at, $70 um, at Home Depot or Lowe's and they have all the different sizes that you would need and for the amount of stuff that I do around the house, I've used it a ton of times. So what you do first, these are a little, a little quirky. Um, when I show you the horizontal installation, those work a little bit better. But what I like to do first and what I've seen that, that helped so far is to uh, tighten the side that I guess is going up the stairs rather than down the stairs first. And you just keep on going to the right over and over again. But you're gonna feel this Allen, the, the screw, start to, start to catch a little bit on the mechanism underneath the top of our, our cover here, what we just installed. So once you start to feel that, stop. So I just felt it. So I'm going to stop. And then I'm going to tighten the other side. I have found that this works the best to just stop once you start to feel it catch a little bit. Otherwise, you'll start to um, end up with maybe some, some crooked tops of the spindles or some crooked covers. So I'm going to tighten the other side now. And this one takes a little longer because there's not as much, uh, I guess, room for me to install. And again, you'll start to feel this one catch just like the other side and then just leave it alone. There's no reason to tighten continuously. Um, once you feel it catch, you're finished. Or else you will end up with a crooked spindle cover. So there we go. That one is installed. And you just go through the same process on the bottom. I'm not gonna show that because I just did the same thing on top. Same thing on the bottom and you're good to go. Okay, just wanted to give you a quick demonstration of how to install your Spindle is using the zip clip system on a flat surface going up to a flat railing. The um, zip clips that you install, at least on the, the bottom and top, are a little bit different than what we did in the background right here. Uh, in the, the example I just showed you, um, you can still see the two screw holes, but they're flat instead of angled. There's no wiggle room in here because they're just going to go straight up. These are too hard to see because they're far away from you, but when you install these, there is a clip on here that locks in your spindle just the same way the, um, the angled ones are. When you install the opposite one of these on top, you'll just want to have it opposite so the clip will be on the other side to lock in your spindle appropriately. So let me show you how to do this. We're going to use the two screws that we used last time that came with the package. We've got our, our leveler and we've got our two spindle uh, shoes as well. Again, doesn't matter. One goes on top, one goes on the bottom. It doesn't matter which one you pick, they're both the same. Okay, so we're gonna take our spindle, grab one of the shoes and slide that on the bottom. At the same time, you're gonna grab the, the other shoe, slide that on top. I like to keep the, uh, the screws. Remember, we're gonna to need to, to tighten these up just like we did with the, uh, the angled ones with a, um, an Allen wrench later. And there's a screw on one side of each of these. I like to just keep them pointed one way. Uh, that's just me, you can do whatever you want. And I like to keep them pointed either to the left or right rather than front or backwards, that way you can't see them when you're walking down your, your staircase or down your hallway. So just slide that all the way down, and then you are going to get your other side of your zip clip system and put that on top of your spindle. Make sure the clip is in the right way. And then this is probably the trickiest part of this. Again, you're going to get the, uh, the leveler, make sure it's level. And then you also want to make sure that your zip clip system, the bracket on top is in the middle of 
your handle. So once you have that down, you grab a screw, get your drill, and screw the screw in. Double check my, my level here, it's just a little bit off. So we're gonna adjust that. Make sure we're back in the middle and we are in good shape. Just like those angled ones, I like to leave this a little bit loose so that I can adjust the bracket just in case something happened where it gets a little uh, crooked in installation. You can see my clip just fell down, so we're just gonna put that back in, that back on, and now we are simply going to put in the other screw through the other hole. Tighten these up. So we take our level off, we move the shoes up. We've got our Allen wrench. And just like those angled shoes, we tighten this. Just like that. We do the same thing on the bottom. So that's how you install the zip clip system when both ends of the spindle go into horizontal bases. And that is a wrap, my friends. Just wanted to give you the look at the full finished product. And of course, there's always a, a cat who somehow sneaks into this. But I'm really happy with the result. It looks really nice and uh, certainly would endorse the zip clip system that made things a lot easier from an effort standpoint rather than drilling those big holes all over the place. Hopefully your installation goes well.